question towards the back, middle again. Thank you. Um, I'm Rod Smith. I'm a finance director from West Kent. Um, the question really just for Rebecca, though others are welcome to answer if they can. Um, <laughs> Rebecca, what are your top tips for motivating staff? Um, I can't believe that you haven't got some. <laughs> Thanks, Rod. <laughs> Rebecca? Just off the cuff, then, I'd say valuing every single member of the team and just treating people how you'd like to be treated. To be completely honest and very blunt recently, things have been a bit tough in Chichester, um, but we're all smiling and we're all just doing the best we can. Um, and it's not been easy, being completely honest, um, but we're just, you know, keeping going. Motivational tips, I just draw a lot of motivation from the people I work with, um, the people I work for, which are my patients, and just do the best I can. I think we all are just doing the best we can, really. Thank you, Rebecca. Does anybody else on the panel want to say something, Lucy, maybe? Or? Well, it's interesting, the, the bits about sort of motivation, about independence, you know, um, top tips, as it were. I think, especially in, you know, in our trust, where staying healthy, being healthy, there, there are huge issues around being motivated to, to do that. Um, and if you feel that the people around you who are supposed to be supporting you, they don't come across as being motivated or, or um, engaged, then that does rub off on the people you're trying to support. Um, and preventive... We, we have got to work in a much more preventive way, but really I think sort of have a proper discussion about what we mean by that, because it's not just eating healthy food and going for a jog every, every two days. It's, it's much more than that when it comes to, to mental, mental well-being. Um, so I think it'd be good to have... I'd really like to have a lot more discussion about what we mean when we say preventive. What is that and, and how we're going to support that to happen? Not just so that it's also... It doesn't, we don't end up having staff who need services too. Yeah, Lucy, Lucy, thank you for that. And, um, and I think in, in the document itself, it talks about there's no health without mental health. And I know Malcolm, uh, Malcolm would be keen to say something um, about that. Do you want to say a quick word, Malcolm, and then I'll pass to Paul on the motivation question. Um, uh, uh, Malcolm Hawthorne, Medical Director at uh, Surrey Borders Foundation Trust. Um, uh, really to endorse what Ed has said around um, the cross-cutting nature of um, uh, mental health and the, um, the realisation, I suppose, for all of us um, that um, we, we need each other. We all have um, mental health problems, if we're honest about it, and we all need um, good mental health in order to get good phys physical health. Uh, one of the appalling statistics that came out for, uh, for us was the, um, uh, the fact that, with pe that people with severe mental illness uh, are four times as likely to uh, die of heart disease or respiratory problems as the rest of the population. And um, uh, Candy has mentioned the, um, uh, the life expectancy issue. And I think there's a very big life expectancy issue there for people with mental health problems and for us all to overcome that uh, little bit of fear and trepidation that we, we have when we think about mental illness. Because unless we get over that fear and start talking in a real way about our real lives, uh, we're not going to um, uh, make much progress. Thank you, Malcolm. Final word from Paul on the motivation top tips, and then I'm going to close. Yeah, I'm just to share something from, from our organisation recently. Um, we, we, we've been trying to furnish staff with much more outcome data in terms of the impact of the, 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 uh, their, their role. Um, and moving to sort of outcome measures of performance rather than surrogates for the outcome measures of, of how quickly we get there. Um, does seem to be having a, a real impact on, on motivation. If you can see how many additional lives have been saved this month against the same period last year, uh, and you can see the direct eff effect of your actions, I think that, that, that really helps motivate people. Thank you. Oh, final, final word, rightly to Ed. Sorry, sorry to do no, this. No, no problem. Um, I think there is also a realisation, going back to your question, um, that some of the things that the public see say me as the surgeon wielding the knife on them, I can only do that if the whole of my team, the person who books the patients in some dark office somewhere has taken pride in what they do and delivered it, uh, that the ward clerks and that the nurses on the ward, all of those are doing their job. Value them, listen to them, 
because they've often got very pertinent things to say to you. They know probably more about patient journeys than some of us think we know. Mm. So for goodness sake, harness them, listen to them, and thank them, because there's nothing worse than being a grumpy beggar when you come in in the morning and everybody else gets grumpy. You're almost guaranteed to have a bad service for the patient. So value, listen. Mm. Thank you. Yes, that's